Eighth place after the morning loop of stages was one of a pair of the JLT rally cars. John Lloyd and Adrian Kavanagh leading their teammates Andrew Barnes and Guy Simmons by 12 seconds. A strong showing for the team so far. And rounding up the top 10 after stage 4 were Gary Cooper and John Riley in their Subaru Impressor. Seemingly choosing to follow the lines left by James Belton a few cars ahead. Steve Perez in the lead of the rally, um, 18 seconds in the lead I think before the penalty for Nick. Uh, is that right? No, I think actually latest is, um, is Hugh Hunter's uh, six behind. Is it Hugh? Uh, yeah, some of the, the results have been a little bit slow coming through, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's been interesting. He, we, we were equal time on the first stage. Uh, we were three seconds faster on the second stage when we were on Dunlots. We changed, we changed to uh, Pirelli's, we were two seconds faster. And the last stage we were a second faster, but it was a very short stage. Very, yeah, it's difficult to tell. We we'll try to tell the difference between the two different uh, makes of tyres. We're trying Dunlops and Pirellis today as a bit of an experiment to see which are which are faster. And uh, <laughs> there's nothing in it really. Both fast. <laughs> They're both fast. Yeah, we got we're going to have an auction to see which ones are cheapest later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well. Good luck for the last three stages. Thanks very much. Hope it all goes well and you, you stay in the lead and. Um, Let's take the prize home today. Yeah, I just got to, yeah, you know, Hugh's a very, very quick driver, and you know, it's only one small mistake. And uh, we've had some tough competitions. A lot of people wanting to get a result here this weekend in the first round of the BTRDA. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Andy's out. It's just a shame he's been having uh, problems with his car. Uh, but when it, when, he, when the car's going well, he's uh, certainly set one good time. Uh, All right. Well, thanks for talking to us, right. and we'll catch up with you later. Yeah. Okay. Cheers. Thank you. Running ahead of the main field on BTRDA events is the 1400 category, and 2009 event winner Julian Wilkes was back to defend his title amidst some tough competition. Julian! How are you, right? No, good, thank you. First round of the BTRDA? Yeah. How does it feel out there right now? A um, bit nervous, it's first one of the season. We, we were fortunate enough, uh, enough to do a tarmac event at Breen two weekends ago, so I feel sort of I've got into it a little bit, but Forest is a whole new ball game and it's uh, very slippy, I'm sure, out there. and. First stage, we'll take it steady. We want to try and get to the end. We won the event last year, so if we can uh, do the same again, we can do it in the snow. Then uh, this should be a piece of cake. Well, no, don't say that. For God's sake, don't say that. Everything's difficult. The boys behind are quick, and yeah, just hope the car goes goes well. Really. Good luck, and we'll see you later in the event. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks. Four, three, two, Later admitting to a bad tyre choice on the first handful of stages, Wilkes and co-driver Will Rutherford were not getting the times they needed and finished the morning's loop of stages in fourth place, an uncharacteristic 16 seconds off the lead. After a season of mixed fortunes in 2009 for Darren Pinson and Karen Watts, a strong showing here on the widening was needed. The first few stages were going well, second place after the first stage and taking the lead of the category going into service. A new car for Matt Edwards this season, taking on Callum Black's 2009 machine. Despite having spent no time in the car before the event, Matt and co-driver Sam Collis were still managing to shake up the regulars. Second place after stage four, still chasing a budget for the 2010 season Matt will be one to watch on future rounds. Martin and Richard Lewis had started well, leading after the first stage, but this was to be short-lived. Losing time on the following stages to finish the morning loop in third place, nine seconds off the lead. Another crew slowly falling down the order was Clive Anstey and Pamela Hilton, holding on to third place after Mailstock, but slipping down to fifth by the time they reached service. Still only 21 seconds behind the leader though at this early stage. Brian McGuinness and Ian Harden in another Vauxhall Corsa were lying in 6th place, a further 8 seconds back. And stepping up to the 1.4 class for 2010, Double Rally First champions Dave Bennett and Alistair McNeil finished the morning in 7th place, trading their trusty Corsa in for a similar car with more spec this year. 
Their stage times indicated that the pair were getting used to the new car as the day went on. After a shakedown for the car on the media day a few weeks ago, Colin Webb and Stuart Harold were only 55 seconds off the category lead in 8th place. Nigel Jenkins and Dean Phillips were pushing their Vauxhall Nova hard over the morning stages and not perturbed by the early frost headed into the service halting 9th place. Equaling the time of Jenkins and Phillips was the MG of Callum Black and Paul Wakeley, another driver to be using the wide-in as a first test for the new car. The shortest run of the weekend was Jim Ward, his MG breaking a drive shaft on the start line of the first stage. Darren, how's the start to the season going for you here at the wide-in? So far, no, it's okay so far. Uh, we're leading uh, into first service, so... Uh, Things are looking up, just need to keep it on the road, but it is icy out there. Is it? Mm, very icy and very slippy. So, uh, I've been using the leaves <laughs> to keep you on the road. <laughs> but no, no, it's just need to keep on going this afternoon the way we did this morning and uh, bring it home, really. So, just routine maintenance here at the service hall? Yeah, just tyres and stuff, yeah, and levels and things like that. Yeah, no, car's fine. Uh, I'm fine. No, we just need to go and do it this afternoon. Good stuff. Well, good luck for the rest of the stages and we will see you at the finish, hopefully. OK, thank you very much. Cheers. Matt, a big smile on your face. Looks like the Forest of Dune is treating you well today. Yeah, that thing's treating me well as well. It's like first first few hundred yards off the start line. It's like bloody hell, everything's happening pretty quick here. And uh, got to the end of the stage after a very quick learning experience and I couldn't actually breathe. Um, first time I've ever had to take my inhaler for my asthma after a rally stage. and. That's got to, got to be the cause of it. So, no, it's, it's brilliant. I'm really enjoying it. So, line in second, um, a little bit back from Darren. But as you said a minute ago, you wouldn't mind if you finished last amount of fun you're having. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I'm breaking far too early, but we're just throwing it around and having a good laugh. And I mean, the time, you know, the, the confidence in the car will come. It's great round the corners anyway. Uh, straight line speed is, you know, it's no slower than a Fiesta. So, that's all sort of comfort, comfortable. But I mean, the gearbox and the, the noise in there is brilliant. Like, it sounds like a. Super 1600 just with a 1400 engine and it. it's brilliant fun. Fantastic, well we hope the next few stages go as well and um, we look forward to seeing you at the finish with as big a smile on your face as you've got now. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Cheers. Entertaining the spectators who had turned out to line the Forest of Dean stages was a well-supported historic category. Some of the regular and well-known faces of British historic rallying join an entry which comprises a good variety of machinery for the first round of the season. Leading the cars away was David Stokes. David, we last spoke to you at the media day. Now we're here for real at the start of the first stage of the wide in. How do you feel? I feel very good, actually. Let's uh, let's get on with it, as I say. You know, let's go rallying. The weather's a bit better than last year, isn't it, for a start? <laughs> well, I only spectated last year, but yes, much better. Probably a better place to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a great day, and we'll catch you up with you later for see you in service. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. With the car fully repaired after a rally-ending roll at the start of the Roger Albert Clark rally late last year, David Stokes and Guy Weaver would be looking to improve on that result here this weekend. Joint fastest on the first stage, with a series of fastest times over the rest of the morning stages, secured a 25 second lead going into service. The Draycott Bakery sponsored escort working perfectly for Stokes. Not such a good start for Terry Brown and Paul Willits in the Team GMF sponsored car. Terry showing us what happens when you set off in reverse at the start of the stage. Despite this, the pair managed sixth fastest on stage one. Problems on stage two prevented any real progress, although you'd be hard pushed to notice, with a strong fourth place going into service. <laughs> 